CataractCoach.com, Traumatic Cataract and a Fibrotic Capsule. What happened in this case, and how are you going to proceed? Now, this is a tough case. Look carefully here. You can see there's a very wrinkled and fibrotic lens capsule. You see a lot of white cataract lens material, but something looks a little off here, right? So put a little tripan blue dye in. Now, be careful. If you put in too much tripan blue dye and there's a weakness or a deficiency, you may get tripan blue dye in the vitreous cavity, and that could mean a hot mess. It'll ruin your red reflex, well, at least temporarily. So here's some viscoelastic. Here's the pre-op. Look at this. You can see there is definitely a white cataract there, a small pupil. And look at the gap between the iris and the lens. That gap is very important. Now, let me tell you about our Cataract Coach podcast. The top podcast is all of ophthalmology. The sole purpose is to make you more successful. You better check it out. Now, back to our case here. Here comes the main incision. And how will you even do a rexus in this case? So we can see the surgeon's kind of grabbing in here with forceps and trying to get a rexus done. But the capsule is so wrinkled and fibrotic, it's just really not easy. So you may have to use something like sharp scissors or... Here we go. It looks like a Sinsky hook here trying to just separate out some of the lens material. So clearly this patient had a rupture of the lens capsule from the injury. And you see leakage of lens material that became liquefied later and then probably absorbed. This patient probably had a lot of inflammation in the eye for a long period of time. So while the capsule bag appears mostly empty, it's because most of this lens material has been you know, absorbed, basically liquefied and then absorbed. Now, using micro scissors here to try to cut this material or oh, maybe just forceps to pull it out of the eye. This is very unusual. So try to get some sort of round opening here in the anterior lens capsule because all this lens material has to be cleared out. Now, it looks like going in with a small gauge of vitrector, trying to loosen up this shell, basically, of lens material here. And this can become very hard and, and hard to remove. And there you go. Look at that. It's almost like a Salmering's ring. But this is the lens peripheral area, the cortex probably, that has become very opacified. And now can go in here and kind of emulsify it, again using the vitrector to clean this out. And hopefully you have an intact posterior capsule and you can get some sort of three-piece lens in here with uh, some sort of stability. Now again, now going to the fake upper. Now the fake upper is going to be a lot easier. When you have this kind of lens material, shoving it down at 23 gauge of a tractor is just not easy. Look at that. With a fake probe, you make short work of it. Very, very easy. Much more efficient. And there is a good, looks like a good posterior capsule. So this glass going inside here. And let's see, what else can you clean up here? So... Taking out some of that lens cortex, you can again use the vitrector. Here's a pro tip on the machine settings go to cortex removal, IA mode, and then even though you're using the vitrector, it won't engage the cutter. That's important here. And so when you clean all this up, let's switch hands maybe and get a little bit different access here. There we go. When you do that, you should be able to get out most of this lens material. Here comes a lens, looks like a three-piece lens. Remember the 7L rule? You learned that on Cataract Coach. There's the leading haptic looking like a number seven. Good, good, good. Going on top of the iris. Okay, I like that too. Open up the optic here, get it turned correctly. There it is. Up, oh, that's upside. That is upside down, buddy. That lens is upside down. You better flip that thing over. Right? Look at the haptics in the S formation. S, as you know, is me being stupid. I don't want to be stupid. I want to be smart. So more viscoelastic going inside there, above the optic, below the optic. Yeah, give yourself a good buffer. And there should be enough room to get this thing flipped over. And let's see what we got here. You definitely want to get that lens flipped over. To, right now, it's upside down. And if you're putting a sulcus lens in, remember, you have a vaulting of those haptics. Ah, much better. Because this is going to allow the lens to be posteriorly vaulted. Now, be careful. These haptics can actually puncture up your posterior capsule. You got to be very careful here. So take your time to get these positioned appropriately. Get those haptics in the sulcus nicely placed. There you go. Looking good. And then if, is there enough of an opening? Can you can do some optic capture? If you can, that's better. The reason why we like optic capture is because it then puts the optic in a better position for your IOL calculations. But more importantly, it helps hold the optic back away from the posterior surface of the iris. So you're less likely to get the IOL edge of the optic rubbing against the posterior surface of the iris. Now, here we go at the end, sealing up the incisions. Look at that. That's a beautiful case. This patient's going to be pretty happy. 
started off with basically no vision is going to end up with very good vision. So fantastic result from this traumatic case. Really proud of this surgeon here. He did a beautiful job here on a tough, tough case. And I like how you address that fibrotic lens capsule. Now, here's post-op day one. Look at that beautiful result. Again, patient has good restoration of fantastic vision. Do you have a good traumatic case like this? Hey, go to cataractcoach.com and submit your video. And remember, the podcast, the number one podcast in all of ophthalmology for a good reason.